Hello everyone! Sanctuary is the main setting for the Diablo games and home of the Nephilim. But unlike the high heavens and the burning hells, it was not created from the deaths of Anu and Tathamad. So I thought it would be interesting to take a look at its story, to answer questions like how did it come to exist, who created it and why, who are these Nephilim and what's their connection to the angels and demons, that's what we're going to find out in this video. So. The eternal conflict is raging full force and has been going on for quite a few centuries since the death of Anu and Tathamad. It's a brutal war that claims millions of lives on both sides and really doesn't go anywhere. Occasionally though, the war would reach heaven and hell itself. Supposedly, the diamond gates of heaven came under attack at least five times, but were never breached. Now call me skeptical all you want, but the entire army of hell didn't manage to break that down. How's that even possible? I mean, come on, Diablo just roared at the damn thing and it shattered into a trillion pieces. Well, okay, I know he was the prime mule at the time and didn't have a whole bunch of angels defending it except for Imperius, but still, come on. As if failing in front of the diamond gates wasn't enough, Hell also came under attack several times and one of these were a direct assault on Mephisto in his own realm of hatred. But as far as we know, this didn't really have any consequences. Again, the law describing these events are very few, so we can't determine anything for certain, other than both sides were very close to victory several times. However, each time they came close, a massive counterattack launched from the opposite side, eventually pushing the war back into Pandemonium again, where the fight for control of the Worldstone and the Pandemonium Fortress continued. Over time, however, an angel called Inarius, who was an advisor to the Angerius Council and under direct command of Tyriel, the Archangel of Justice, started to question the conflict. Despite being highly regarded among the angels and a successful warrior on the battlefield, he was growing tired after eons of endless war and finally concluded that the conflict was unjust and that he wanted to leave it. At first, he confided in Tyriel. He told him that the war could never have a victor, and that only an eternity of revenge, pride and hatred awaited those who chose to stay and continue the fighting. Tyriel, however, would not listen, and this frustrated him. One day, Inarius was wounded while leading a group of angels from an outpost of the Pandemonium Fortress, and when he awoke, he was in chains inside a demon's lair. Resignedly, Utterly broken and convinced he was about to die, Inarius started to tell his captor about how he wanted to escape the conflict and live his life in peace without experiencing the brutality of war every single day. It turned out that Inarius was in luck, because his captor was none other than Lilith, the daughter of Mephisto, and just like Inarius, she had a strong desire to escape the conflict. She released Inarius and the two of them formed an alliance. They agreed that there had to be others like them willing to escape, and over time they gathered a small group of renegades consisting of both angels and demons. Somehow they gained access to the Worldstone inside the Pandemonium Fortress, and used its powers to conceal both themselves and the stone from the remaining angels and demons still fighting in the conflict. Inarius then shifted the stone into another dimension, where they would use it to create a new world of their own. To make sure that the stone remained hidden, Inarius formed a gigantic mountain around it as form of a protective shell, which is now known as Mount Ariad. And to make sure that his powers would be unmatched by any who might challenge him in his new world, he secretly tied the Worldstone's powers to his own. This increased his powers unimaginably and made him the strongest being in creation at the time. Once completed, Inarius, Lilith and the Renegade started to shape the rest of the world around it, and Inarius named this world Sanctuary. They call me a hero. I slew demons beyond count. I won battles and broke sieges, but it availed me nothing. I know that this war can have no victor, only an eternity of revenge, pride and hatred. Tyriel does not understand. He cannot see beyond the glory of battle. In time he may. But that day is not yet here. I was struck down in the third charge. I lay upon the ground, only to wake in chains. I did not know that demons took prisoners. I babbled like a fool about my dreams of escaping this war. My captor freed me and said that we would meet again. Her name was Lilith, daughter of Mephisto. 
Those who follow us are strong in purpose and conviction, but we are only few. Yet if we can obtain the power of the World Stone, it will be enough. We will scale the wind shear slope, steal into the heart of the fortress, and be gone before anyone notices the stone's disappearance. We have created a new world. We can live here in peace, away from war. I have named this world Sanctuary. Having successfully created Sanctuary as their new home, the Renegade started to live their lives in peace, and as bizarre as it sounds, they started to fall in love and mate with each other. Inarius and Lilith were the first couple to do this, but before I continue with the story, I'm going to ask the obvious question on everyone's mind. How did they mate? The angels all pretty much look like humans with wings, right? Well, humans with wings and a missing face, but in general they look human, and we know how that works. However, the demons may look like everything from dogs, spiders, lizards and snakes, to a seducing succubus like Lilith. Now, I'm not being judgmental or anything like that, but unless you're into some pretty hardcore demon bestiality, I imagine that at least some of the angels had a hard time finding a partner. Especially if Lilith was the only succubus among the entire group of renegades, which of course we know nothing about, because the lore describing this event is fortunately very lacking in detail. Without trying to dig deeper into the various ways of lovemaking, Inarius and Lilith soon had an offspring called Rathna. Other offspring from the remaining renegades soon followed, and it wasn't long before these offspring were numbered in the tens of thousands, and emerged as a whole new race called the Nephilim. This first generation of Nephilim would come to be known as the Ancients, and it's unclear whether they were raised by their parents or if they just wandered around exploring the world, seeking for answers to their existence. To mention a few of these first Nephilim you have Alaric, who is now the NPC guarding the Drowned Temple in Diablo 3, and Bolkathos, the ancient barbarian king who is mentioned a lot in the games as well. You would think that as parents to a new emerging race, the renegades would be happy, but instead they grew very nervous and afraid of their children, because it turned out that the mix between heaven and hell had given the Nephilim powers way beyond anything that could be rivaled by any angel or demon. The renegades started to fear that the Nephilim would eventually become a threat to them, or even worse, draw the attention of the high heavens and the burning hells. If they became aware of Sanctuary, it would definitely mean the end of all which they had worked so hard to build, and that meant that the vast majority of renegades called for the extermination of the Nephilim. This dissension troubled Inarius a lot. He called for a period of reflection so they could consider their next move in solitude. Inarius eventually concluded that the Nephilim were abominations that were a threat and had to be destroyed. Lilith, on the other hand, did not intend to allow anyone to hurt her children. She wanted to use them as her own personal army, and in a frenzy, she started murdering the other renegades one by one, both angels and demons, until at last everyone was dead except the Nephilim, Inarius and herself. When Inarius discovered what his lover had done, he became furious, but no matter how much he wanted to, he could not bring himself to harm her. He had promised Lilith that he would never kill her or let anyone else do the same, and Inarius was an angel true to his word. Instead, he banished her into the void, a mysterious realm that consists of nothing but empty darkness, and is considered to be a place where nothing and no one can return from. Inarius now found himself completely alone in Sanctuary along with his race of so-called abominations. He could not stand the thought of being alone, so he decided to let his children live. However, he still saw them as a threat to himself, and to remove this threat, he once again turned to the Whirlstone. He attuned the stone to not only hide Sanctuary from the high heavens and the burning hells, but also to gradually reduce the powers of the Nephilim over each passing generation, until at last the Nephilim powers became so dormant in his children that the entire race eventually forgot they even had them in the first place. Inarius then disappeared and did not emerge again for centuries. I hope you guys enjoyed this story about Sanctuary's creation and the rise of the Nephilim. Again, if I did forget to mention something or made any mistakes, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments, where you can also ask me any questions you might have. If you're interested in more Diablo lore, I'll be uploading a new lore video about every 1-2 to two weeks. Otherwise, I highly recommend the Diablo novels available pretty much everywhere. 
Subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Until next time guys, thank you for watching.